Hello, good day to you. Um, today I'll be discussing the core breath, which is a deep diaphragmatic breath to help you engage your core muscles. You can use this practice uh, throughout your yoga practice. You can use it while you're working out, while you're sitting at a red light. You can use it during pregnancy or in the postpartum time. Anytime that you feel like you need uh, some core strengthening, your breath is actually one of the first things that you can do to keep your core nice and strong and stable is to actually breathe properly um, by using the diaphragmatic breath, which we do breathe diaphragmatically. It just depends on how much of the capacity of the diaphragm you're actually using. So the diaphragm is a mushroom top shaped muscle. It's shaped like a mushroom top. And it sits at the base of the lungs and in between the rib cage. And as you inhale, the diaphragm presses down, the pelvic floor stretches, and the abdomen expands. And as you exhale, the diaphragm lifts, the pelvic floor lifts, and the abdomen contracts. So it's like a cylinder. Um, and as you inhale, it moves down and expands or bulges. And then as you exhale, it lifts and contracts. So one of the ways that you can learn uh, the core breath, uh, I like to teach it in three different segments. So the first is to learn how to actively engage your rectus abdominis. So I like to use a yoga strap. You can also use a pair of pantyhose or a pair of pants. Um, anything that you have that you can wrap around your torso and tie. So coming right underneath of the chest or the breasts, and you'll take your strap and tie it about the mid portion, actually like the top mid portion of the ribs. And you'll tie it so that it's a little taut, so it's tight. So that as you begin to breathe, as you inhale, well, not as you begin to breathe, because you're always breathing, unless you're dead, but so as you begin to inhale, you'll feel a sense of expansion as your ribs expand and press and bulge out into the strap. And then as you exhale, you'll feel your ribs as they pull away from the strap. And then you'll inhale again. Notice how the ribs expand out into the strap. And then as you exhale, you'll notice how the ribs kind of draw together and pull away from the and you inhale and the ribs kind of expand. And then as you exhale, you feel as the ribs draw away from the strap and in towards each other. So just continuing that for five more breaths, just until you get the feeling of that expansion and contraction of the ribs. Three more breaths. And you should be able to feel that expansion throughout the front, the sides, and the back side of the torso. One more breath here. And exhale and release. Good. All right, you can remove your strap. And then the next thing that I like to do when teaching the core breath is to kind of get people um, engaged in the intercostals. So the oblique intercostals are the little muscles that are in between your ribs, in between the ribs of the rib cage. So you can take a couple of fingers and just kind of slide them in between your ribs. I like to spread my fingers here, relaxing through the shoulders. And just take maybe your thumbs at the back in between two of your rib cages, and then taking your fingers in the front uh, in between the rib cages. And again, as you inhale, feeling that expansion of the rib cage, and as you exhale, you can feel those little muscles in between your ribs working. So inhaling, expanding, and exhaling and contracting. We'll do three more.
Just really tuning into those muscles in between the ribs. And one more breath. Good. All right, so now we'll make our way down to the transversus abdominis. So you'll take two fingers, your index finger and your middle finger, and you'll place your fingers right at your hip bones, right to the insides of your hip bones. Now your transversus abdominis is a kind of a hammock shaped muscle that attaches from your two hip bones down to the pubic symphysis and it's kind of like a little sling. It supports all of the organs of the lesser pelvis. Um, and it's also attached to the pelvic floor. So anytime that you inhale and exhale and engage your transversus abdominis, especially when you're engaging it fully, it automatically draws up on the pelvic floor. So anytime that you use the core breath, you're automatically uh, engaging your pelvic floor and also exercising and strengthening the pelvic floor. So being sure that on those inhales that you allow the pelvic floor to stretch and relax and then as you exhale, allowing it to engage and lift. So again, taking those two fingers right to the insides of your hip bones, and you're imagining, you're imagining, you're imagining that when you inhale, you can kind of feel a softening of your abdomen as it bulges forward. And as you exhale, imagine that you're drawing your two hip bones in towards each other or in towards your belly button. And then you inhale and relax. Allow the belly to kind of bulge forward a bit and then exhale, draw those two hip bones in towards your belly button. So you can kind of feel a little tightening if your fingers are right on the insides of your hip bones you can feel your transversus abdominis engaging as you exhale and then again inhale soften relax here and then exhale draw those two hip bones in towards your belly button engaging through your transversus abdominis and then inhaling Relaxing and releasing one more time. Exhale, draw the two hip bones in towards your belly button. And relax. Good. Now we'll come into a full core breath here. I like to thumbs and my pinkies here and imagine that I'm drawing everything, all of these muscles in towards the midline of the abdomen on the exhale. So there's four different sounds that you can make. The first one is a hissing sound, S. The second sound is an S-H, sh. The fourth sound is an F, f. And the fourth sound is an H, so you can experiment with all four of these sounds. You can try one, then the other, then the third, and then the fourth, and then see which one gives you the strongest contraction on the exhales while you're practicing your core breath, and then you'll stick with that one. So I'll go through all four sounds for the first four, and then I'll finish the last six with my favorite, which is an S. It gives me a really strong contraction of my transversus abdominis and of my entire abdomen, all of my abdominal muscles and my pelvic floor. So I prefer the S. And when you're exhaling, making sure that you're releasing all of the breath, every last single little bit of breath is exhaled. All right, so we'll start bringing your thumbs up by your ribs and your pinky fingers down bones. The other six fingers are just kind of across the abdomen. your abdomen allowing the pelvic floor to stretch and the diaphragm to press down and as you exhale drawing everything to the midline right into the midline of the abdomen towards the belly button good inhale again
and the hands are just for guidance, just reminding you that you're drawing everything in towards the midline of the abdomen. The next sound of F. And H. Good, so you'll choose the sound that works best for you, either the S, the SH, the F, or the H. Whichever one gives you that strongest contraction and lifting of the pelvic floor and drawing in of the abdominal muscles. So I'll finish my last six with an S and you can choose the one that works best for you. So bringing the thumbs up again, the pinky fingers down right the bones, taking a nice inhale, softening and allowing your belly to bulge forward, relaxing through the pelvic floor and exhale, contract. Three more. One more. Whew. Now, if you're practicing the core breath properly and consistently, you will notice a difference in your natural breath um, you want to start to make this kind of breathing a habit so i always like to tell my clients um, when they're sitting in the school pickup line ready to pick up their kids or whether they're at a red light um, or maybe waiting for the train to cross just to come into their core breath and begin with practicing two minutes of core breathing and then adding on a minute until you work your way up to 10 minutes of the core breath per day you will definitely notice a difference in your strength, um, in your breathing, in your yoga practice, in your workouts, um, because you'll be breathing more efficient, efficiently and using a higher capacity of your diaphragm, which is a muscle. So we need to work that muscle um, and learn how to engage it properly um, for it to become stronger. So. Um, when you're practicing your core breath, you do not have to sit in Virasana on your heels. This is just the most comfortable for me. You can sit cross-legged in Sukhasana or Sadasana. You can sit on a fitness ball. You can try this standing. And eventually, you can make your way onto all fours, hands and knees. Maybe you can try it in downward facing dog and in different postures um, to continue to build your core strength. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.